Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Um, so today I am opening up this shakuhachi and this is a Japanese style flute. So unfortunately I have made a little mistake. Um, throughout this video I refer to this flute as a shakuhachi uh, which is a traditional Japanese flute however it is not exactly this kind of flute. Um, this transverse flute is actually called a shinobui. Um, so a little bit different. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put the spelling for both of those down in the, in the description um, so you can get a clearer idea of what I'm talking about. Sorry. Um, and it's traditional and I, I'm really very excited to hear kind of what it sounds like. Um, will it be much different to my other ones or not? So <laughs> let's open it up. <laughs> okay, here we go. Oh my goodness. I really absolutely love this little cloth that it comes in. It's so pretty. Um, this, I think it's just gonna slide right off or maybe I'll need some scissors to get that. Oh no, it's just sticky. Okay, so we got that off. Um, and then it has this cute little kind of wrap around cord. So we just pull that out and unwrap that. And out comes the flute. That's such a beautiful carrying case. I love it. And look at the flute. That's just really pretty. Okay, let's get this plastic opened up. Oh my goodness. That's so beautiful. Um, so this is a lot like um, the Chinese DZ. Dizi, I always say that wrong. Um, <laughs> it is a transverse flute, so you hold it like this and you blow across the hole right there, sort of like the whole um, holding up the soda bottle <laughs> to your lips, um, which is kind of a different way of blowing than like a recorder or something like that. So I'm gonna play around with this for a little bit and see if I can get it to make some noises because this is cool. <laughs> so the shakuhachi is kind of an interesting instrument. Um, it does come from Japan. Uh, it emerged in its um, now form <laughs> around the 16th century, um, but it shares a common ancestor um, with many Eastern transverse flutes. Um, it's very similar to the Dietzi, um, to other flutes from the region. Um, the evolution of instruments I find just really fascinating. <laughs> they are all um, in the same family, so similar, and yet they have such interesting and unique differences that I just, I love learning about. Um, <laughs> so this one does have kind of the breathier tone, um, and it is usually made out of bamboo, um, which, is, which is also very similar to the Yuditsa. Okay, so I wanted to show you um, this fingering chart. There are some chromatic notes that require half holing, um, which can be kind of tricky if you are new to the flute. Um, so do be aware of that. Uh, so this is a really interesting transverse flute. Um, so first of all, you are supposed to play it with four fingers on the right hand and three on the left, uh, which is a little bit unusual, um, but it is sort of like the ocarina fingering where this pinky is supposed to constantly stay down. Um, so it's not that far off from something I'm used to. Um, I'm not sure if it's the the nature of the plastic um, or if the flute is supposed to have a breathier sound um, than a western flute. I'm gonna have to study up on that because it definitely has an interesting, this in particular, this one has an interesting character to it. Uh, so I'm gonna do a little playing through the range of this flute. Um, there are some high notes listed on the fingering chart that I cannot quite reach. Um, and I probably just need to work on my embouchure. Um, but I will say, if you are brand new to woodwind instruments or to something like the flute, um, and you're looking for a beginner's instrument, I don't think this is the one. Um, the embouchure, which means the shape of your mouth when you're blowing across the hole, um, is a little difficult. <laughs> I'm having some trouble with it, and I played the flute for years and years and years. Um, so yeah, this may not be the very best beginner's one, um, but if you're already a flute player uh, and you're interested in just having some, you know, some different sounds in your repertoire, I think this is a really cool option. <laughs> ability 
tops out. It's that very highest note. Um, there are, as I said, on the fingering chart, there's some overtones lifted that can get you um, the highest note, I think. Yeah, it's an A <laughs> above the staff. Um, so it can get really high. I definitely have played that on my Western flute before. Um, but <laughs> you're not going to really need notes like that for really any solo music that you're playing or really any music that you're playing unless you're um, playing in a giant marching band and you're probably not going to be playing the shakuhachi if you play in a giant marching band. There's piccolos for that. <laughs> um, so I took a look at the songs that come on the uh, fingering chart for this shakuhachi and one of them is the traditional Japanese folk song Sakura Sakura um, which is one of my favorites actually. I think I played that on my actual flute back in fourth grade. <laughs> that was one of my favorites then too. Um, so I'm going to give it a try. So there you have it. That is the Japanese shakuhachi. Um, again, this is not very expensive on Amazon. Um, so if you want to try out something new, I think this is a fantastic investment. Um, I will put a link to that down in the description. So if you'd like to check it out, please just go visit there. If you have any questions, please do feel free to ask down in the comments. I'm, I'm kind of on a flute kick lately. I'm having a lot of fun with this. So love to talk with you about it. <laughs> Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day. Thank you all so much for watching. If you would like to subscribe to my channel, go ahead and click on that subscription button right up there. Otherwise, if you would like to join my Patreon or buy me a coffee, the links to those are down in the description. I hope you have an absolutely wonderful day.